Hello folks, thank you for joining me again today. You can see where I am. I'm at the old Bradwell power station with the reactor buildings and the intermediate storage facility. Today's talk is going to be about people, place and power. Welcome. This is a section of the main runway, east-west. The proposed access road will meet at this point here. Well, there are the reactor buildings in the distance. And as we move round, we are now on all the land proposed to put up Bradwell B. In fact, we're looking pretty much where the cooling towers will go. And if we swing round a bit further, I'm on one of the perimeter tracks and over here is the north face of one of the turbine halls. And just beyond that is proposed to have one of the reactor buildings itself. It's going to be a huge height compared to the old Bradwell, which is behind the camera at the minute. And I'm just going to take another shot and we can see how high it's going to be. This big and this area of the coast is vulnerable to unstoppable sea level rise. Looking at this projection, just 10 years time in 2030, you can see large parts of the site fall within flood level two and flood level three. All a little bit crazy to build a nuclear power station where it could land up being an island in a swimming pool. This little blue flag marks the edge of the site investigation works for the proposed Bradwell B and the whole area is vast for where they're going to do drilling, uh, seismic tests and also dig out what they call a load test pit which is 200 metres by 100 metres by 8 to 10 metres deep. That is huge and all the spoil from that excavation will be put to one side then they promise after three to five years they will put it all back and restore this land to what it was before this is now desolate clearly there has been some weed killing already started before any planning permission has been granted i've come down south and i'm standing on the route of the proposed secondary access road from east end and over my shoulder will be the end of the whole proposed Bradwell B complex. Leaving that location we're now driving northwards and we can see the compound that Bradwell B are using. That's a bunch of offices and facilities and at the end of the fenced off area there is a blister hangar where they stored their core samples for the first investigative work that they did. We are going to go north and then east and we can look and in the distance there's St Peter's Chapel. We'll move round. Now we're going to the north, uh, Mersey Island in the distance there. As we swing round to the west we can get another view of the proposed giant cooling towers. So we're looking at the old baffle wall which used to separate the hot water and the cold water for the Bradwell A station. We can swing round, we look at Tollsbury, then we look up the River Blackwater and we come to Bradwell Waterside and then we come right round to the path that will be the new road up to the station from the new here that they are proposing to bring in materials and this would be a permanent pier.
And further along the seawall to the east they're proposing to have a temporary jetty which will be 600 metres out into the estuary. It's going to interfere with marine movements and certainly will interfere with the sailing club calendars. All this roadway that we're on, a relic of World War II, is going to be destroyed by the huge development that is Bradwell B. No memorial except for this. How can they desecrate it by building a, a monstrosity and a, behind it? Look, I think it's a totally unsuitable place to put it, given that we're at the very end of the Denji Peninsula, on rural lanes, far away from A roads, in a very quiet area. For me, Bradwell is a completely unsuitable site. The losses that Bradwell will suffer far outweigh any gains. The losses of historical value, the local buildings, RF Bradwell Bay, St Peter's Chapel. There are so many areas within this very historic village that should be protected for future generations. It was a complete surprise to us when we discovered the proposed road was going to come through our garden. We knew nothing about it until we picked up the brochure from the local shop and saw it in there. We spoke to BRB about it and they confirmed that if they want it, they can take our garden by compulsory purchase. Bradwell on Sea is a place of extraordinary peace and beauty. That's what we love about it, and what we stand to lose under the threat of Bradwell B. The build period will be an absolute nightmare for local residents. One of the things that will happen is there will be at least four, four and a half thousand they're projecting temporary workers in temporary accommodation, six storey high blocks, which will literally be here on the water side. They are proposing what they're calling an overspill area for caravans. And this is over and above the four and a half thousand accommodated. The numbers don't actually stack up because what they're talking about is 9,100 workers at the height of construction period four and a half thousand of those will be living on site and three thousand of those will be what they're calling local their definition of a local being up to 90 minutes drive away but that still is a shortfall of 1600 people so where are they going we moved to bradwell and sea from colchester about five years ago i grew up close to the area so i knew all about bradwell way one of the main reasons for us moving here was because of our children. We wanted them to have a rural life and benefit from this style of living where there is that little bit more freedom and a place that has a close-knit community. We moved knowing there might be a possibility of another power station being built at some point, but that was one of the risks we took. Before the plans were revealed, we were okay with the idea of having a new one built. But after reviewing the plans, we're totally against the destruction that will cause by building this new power station at Bradwell. The size of the build is the biggest issue for me. I'm not worried of how its power is generated. So I'm not looking at this from an anti-nuclear point of view. But this site will totally wreck the area for everyone and give very little benefits to the local people. We're talking about a 700% increase in population in a very small rural area. The social impacts for that. I, I think are unimaginable. But it's not just Bradwell and Sea that we affected. With the new roads and park and rides that are also part of the plans, this will have a massive impact to anyone living on these routes out towards Chelmsford 
all the way down to Wickford. This whole proposal is making me feel extremely determined. It's having a very, very large emotional impact on me. I care very much about this area. I grew up in this area. But not only that, when I think of how unique this coastline is and how special it is in terms of the protected species, the flora and the fauna, we are moving into an era where we know that restoration is so important in terms of our environmental impact on the planet. And this will absolutely destroy a very sensitive and very important environmental area. We're going to talk about the power groups behind a nuclear power station, how they come about. At the top level, we have nation states. France, they own 83% of electricity to France, we know as EDF. They run the current UK nuclear fleet and they're also behind the Hinkley Point C new build and the proposed Sizewell C new build. China, they effectively control China General Nuclear that are behind the proposed Bradwell B. Overall, the decisions would be taken by UK Gov and the Secretary of State and you've also got regulators such as the Office for Nuclear Regulation and the Environment Agency. Importantly though, we do not have our own uranium. So therefore we have to go out to source uranium and that means that we do not effectively have energy security. Then there are influences. The US had a bearing on the Huawei situation for telecommunications and they're also trying to stop the UK being involved with China General Nuclear. We have government advisors, there's a whole list of them, the Office for Budget Responsibility, National Audit Office and so on. We have people that promote nuclear energy, we have the lobbyists for and against, we have security concerns to do with Russia. The main reason behind all this is to provide power to homes, industry and infrastructure through the national grid. This diagram is available. I will make sure there's a nice link in the description so that you can study it in more detail. And this is by no means comprehensive. There's far more than we can list here. Well, I'm back again, have had a fascinating time uh, visiting Bradwell and talking to people that I've not met before and seeing places that I've not seen before on the old RAF Bradwell Bay airfield. I haven't talked about the power of nature and I'm going to close with this because we know that sea level rise is happening and it would really affect that northeast part of the Denji Peninsula where they're proposing to build Bradwell Bay along with Hinkley Point C and further up the east coast, Sizewell C, sea level rise is going to be a huge problem. So let's care for the planet, let's be mindful of the people and about the place. Let us not diminish and destroy such an amazing place as Bradwell. Thank you for bearing with me on this video. Please, if you've not already done so, click on the blob and click on the notification bell. And I hope to see you next time. Meanwhile, stay safe. All the very best.